Hello. Hey. 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 How is everyone? Good. Fantastic. So this panel is balancing YouTube with a job or career. Um, I am the moderator. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm also known as What About Adam. Um, I'm vaguely on the internet sometimes. Um, and then by day, my career, um, I work in kids' TV. Um, so that's a really quick um, introduction of myself. Um, I'll switch over to our panelists, and they will be the ones answering all the questions today. Um, also, at the end of the panel, we'll also be doing a Q&A. So if you have any burning questions uh, to do with careers or juggling with it all or stress or whatever, keep it in mind and um, we'll be throwing it out to the crowd. So let's just start off to my right. Um, so my name is Sana Fliegentart and on YouTube I'm known as Books and Quills. I talk about books on the internet. Um, and I also work at Hockey Books, which is a publishing company that publishes books for teenagers. We also have a booth upstairs in case you haven't seen it yet. My name is Evan, I make YouTube videos, and I also work at an advertising company making the beautiful ads you see on Facebook and Twitter. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to thank for that. You're welcome. Um, I'm nice. Sammy, a full-time twin. I'm joking. Uh, I am, I'm a part-time librarian, um, and I do three videos a week, so yeah, that's, that's me. Nice balance. Fantastic. So then, there's your lovely panelists for today. Um, so I think the first obvious question um, is, what are exactly the main challenges that you guys come up with juggling a nine-to-five job with a YouTube career? Well, I think the main problem for me is that how much time a full-time job takes up, you know? It's a lot of time. Um, so I find like I have to do most of the things when I get home after work, when I'm tired, or on the weekend. And I think it's mostly the time thing. I just wish I had a couple of extra days to work mm -hmm. on my channel. Mm -hmm. And what do you guys think? I'm just like permanently knackered when I've got work in the, in the week, but um, it's, that's why it's really hard for me as like a reality check to get like organized, because um, we do free videos a week on our channel, so it's really about managing our time and getting collabs in um, when you're working 9 to 5. Coffee is good. I like yeah. coffee. And Red Bull when it's, you know, good for you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so. I think my problem is that uh, when you work a 9 to 5 job mm -hmm. or 9 to 6 or whatever, when you get done, you do not want to do any more of this work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just lay down in your bed, watch some TV and go, Ugh. And then you have to wait. So for me, I just... It's all, it is about time, basically, because I don't want to do anything YouTube-related until the weekend, because that's my first day of non-work, but then I work on the videos, and then I do it again. Yeah. So, so you guys have both mentioned um, time and time management. Um, was this a process that can, you kind of had to learn to understand, or did, when you started doing a full-time job, or maybe you've always been in a full-time job when you started uh, making YouTube videos, has that something been hard to get adjusted to, or um, is this something you have to create like your own schedule, or is it just like, what, what's the kind of main points for that? I think one of the things I had to get used to was that I couldn't do like collabs or any projects during the week. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on during the week, for example, now with Summer in the City, some people coming over to London, and they're like, oh, they just sent an email saying, oh, do you want to do a collab? I'm like, I wish I could, <laughs> but I'll be working on all days outside of Summer in the City. So that's one of the bigger things. So you have to, if you ever have a day off or you have a holiday, then sometimes I will use that to do video projects because, you know, Monday through Friday is when a lot of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, you have to kind of make your own schedule in your head and really stick to it because it's really hard to, to deviate when you know you're working 9 to 5, so you can't do it during that time, but you really have to plan, okay, on Wednesday, that's my only free day because on Thursday, I'm hanging out with some friends at some place. Friday is the Sitsi party at the end of the night. <coughs> a Saturday, you're at Sitsi, so I have to make a video on Sunday. What the heck am I going to do? I have to plan ahead all the way to Wednesday until I want to edit it. But also, it's one of those things where normal friends don't understand as much about the whole job thing. Cause like, YouTube, yeah. <laughs> make videos. Um, yeah. So like, I had my friend Tim was like, oh, Evan, you want to come do be in my sketch this week? And I'm like, what day? He's like, Thursday. I'm like, I've got a job. <laughs> uh, but I did work from home at the sketch. <laughs> that's good. I guess that's pretty lucky for you working from home because you kind of get the element of kind of, I guess you can like switch and change. You can be like, okay, I can stop for an hour to quickly yeah. edit or do this. Is, cause, does that work that you way? You do feel very, you know, sad and ashamed sometimes. <laughs> I was at a different house completely in a different area and I had to Skype my boss at one point and he was like, oh, that's really interesting painting on your wall. I went, yeah, yeah. 
I haven't seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cat too. It was, yeah. It's really interesting. But uh, it, it helps balance your time a bit more when you can work from home. Definitely. That's allowed. So. Yeah. I think the phrase that normal friends is going to get thrown around quite a lot. Uh, I think I'm quite blessed in that um, my girlfriend and friends. friends and family seem to understand that I'm trying to do something. It's, it's, I don't see doing YouTube videos as a chore, um, thankfully. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't ever want to see it like that. But um, working in a library from 9 till 5, I just see it as, a, at the moment, sometimes a waste of time because I'd love to put all that time and energy that I have, that I don't have when I get home from work, into progressing my channel. But I can fall back on the fact I have a twin that can do that while I'm not there. Um, I don't just, think anyone do else has that. Yeah, like, yeah. You work in the library yeah, some sometimes. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's just really hard to get the balance. And that's really only something I've learned at the age of 22 about three weeks ago when I had like a mental breakdown to my girlfriend and I said like I can't do nine to five in a week and so she's like don't be stupid like you're making funny videos and you sit there reacting to like two girls one cup you can do this so I was like okay <laughs> it's fine so it's just reality check I think and it's just about being mature and adult even though we hate them words why am I doing that um yeah oh good no so in comparison to the three of you you're all quite quite different jobs they're quite Vast, and I'm guessing they depend on the size of teams and sense of colleagues you have. What do your colleagues actually think of your videos, and do they know about it? So what I do at Hockey is I run their YouTube channel, so I oh, think well. they have an idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. um, I hope so. Yeah. And also, instead of writing a cover letter for that job, I sent in a video. So from the beginning, they knew that I had a YouTube channel, and they kind of hired me because I had a YouTube channel. And ever since then, I've been forcing them to be in videos on our YouTube channel. So I think you know they have a pretty good idea of it, and it's something that they hired me for, and they you know like being in them, and sometimes it takes some convincing. Mm. Um, but everyone of has a really good time with it and so some of them I think watch my videos from time to time some of them don't but they're all very much aware of it and support it it's quite lucky I think <laughs> yeah How about, is it the same for you guys or I mean I mean I did get hired with YouTube on my CV because I mean it's a skill to have to be able to do that type of thing and mm -hmm. continuously work for something um, so they knew about it they don't necessarily like my puns, but <laughs> they do uh, appreciate the stuff that I do because I know a lot about the platform. So when we go into YouTube advertising, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. so. um, yeah. As you can imagine, working in library, it's not exactly um, a young <laughs> workforce. Um, so that they're trying to explain <laughs> what I do, um, and I say, oh, I do a blog, I do, I do video blogging, and they're like, oh, right. So can you make money doing that? And, and the question is, that's the question, isn't it? Can, yeah. can, you, can you earn money doing that? Do your parents mind you doing that? And I'm like, one, wow, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Um, but then when I've got um, viewers coming in and seeing me at work and stuff like that, it's really exciting for them. They still don't quite understand what YouTube is and they thought it's a place you go to watch cats. Um, it's not, as we all know. I mean, <laughs> there's so much variation on YouTube, but it's just really difficult to explain it to my parents only just got their head around that my Twitter is a different thing to my YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> and we make, we make jokes about that regularly, like, have you uploaded to your Twitter yet? And I'm like, no, it's just, it's waiting to, waiting to publish. Got selfie. Mm -hmm. Publish? What's that? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite difficult to explain to my people mm -hmm. I work with, so. Mm -hmm. um, Avin, you mentioned that you put YouTube on your CV. Um, did that come up in your uh, job interviews and job applications when you were getting your job? Yeah, I think that's come up in like every one. Oh, really? Yeah, because I mean, you, you, I could, it's all about how you present yourself because if you pr present yourself as just yeah I make videos and uh, talk to my camera yeah. uh, it's a lot less professional than if you use resume words with it so <laughs> it's like you know generated 2.4 million views and three three hundred thousand daily views per month and or <laughs> yeah filmographer filmmaker yeah. generated you know this following base and so didn't use advertising and <laughs> impressions they the thing is companies like numbers they don't necessarily know what the words you're saying are like v -v -v log mm. but they'll know oh that's a that has seven numbers. That's a seven-digit number. Mm -hmm. well, so even even if you don't have that, like a huge subscriber number, no. saying things like community management and audience engagement. Even if you have a couple of hundred subscribers, but you do you you create content, all those things. Those are words that can really help as well. Yeah, because mm -hmm. so many people in the industry don't know what they're doing. So the fact that you have done it for your own stuff shows that you have initiative and that you want to do it, not just oh yeah, I like this job. How much are you paying again? <laughs> so it, like that's really good for employers. Yeah. 
No, it's really interesting to bring that up um, when you're bringing up, like when you said about uh, community engagement and stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm guessing some of you might be um, video bloggers, some of you might you just watch YouTube videos, and um, I guess it varies with the career choices um, each way. I mean, it might be a bit different if you're going into, you know, be a lawyer and you're like, oh, I'm a video blogger, I've got so many views or something like that. But I mean, adjusting to uh, the industry you're going into, it could be a plus and a, and a, and a minus because with me. Um, like I work uh, in behind the scenes uh, for kids TV, so I uh, I've just started a new job quite recently, and I, I did I did bring it up in my in my interviews, um, for example. But I mentioned it in a way that oh I, I get engagement for you know younger younger people and I get what you know people I understand the internet because in certain kind of industries some people like that about you so it, I mean it's very varied it could be very specific to, to you or not whether this affects you or not but to people that it does affect this is a really good um, way to kind of show that you've got a different varied and different act um, side of it because now in my current job like I, I work in development but I um, also um, have to keep thinking outside the box of um, online sites as well like that and engagement and that sort so it is really interesting but um, anyway yes uh, next question is uh, about uh, the employers and so we've mentioned all about like CV and stuff like that has it actually um, has your online life actually affected you and your job or getting your job, for example? So, I mean, you've mentioned you've had CV in your job, so that, that must be the same. And then you, you had a, you got your job by posting a video of yourself. So, I mean, how has that affected you and does it affect your day-to-day -day runnings in your job? I've definitely had it happen the other way around as well, mm. where I went to an interview and instead of asking me about all of the relevant things, they kept asking about my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So we just ended up talking about my YouTube channel and in the end they thought I had too much going on, so they just didn't hire me because oh. I was too busy doing other things. Oh. So things like that can happen as well. Um, and I remember that during my interview for the job I have currently, um, there was definitely a question where they said, do you have enough time to have a full-time job as well? Mm. I was like, well, my full-time job is obviously my priority <laughs> at this point. Yeah, so that was something that in the beginning, I think employers do think a lot about that. If they can see that you put so much time into your channel, they will kind of think about if you have enough time to also do your full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, but now when I do my job, I very much do all my YouTube things on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, they do really support us being on Twitter while we're working, and I'm also on Twitter for my job. So sometimes I can answer some questions back and forth, and so those are things that I can kind of combine during my lunch break, mm -hmm. and that's really nice. I used to work at Pizza Hut. Stuff crust, that was me. <laughs> and um, making video blogs while you're making pizza, you know. Yeah. That would be actually a really good channel. Oh, I would watch that nose. actually. No, that, that's yeah. not what I did. Um, they, they, I did it, that's when I just started making videos as well, so they were really bad. Uh, worse. And um, <laughs> so I just, start, I wanted to make a vlog about the type of customers that come into Pizza Hut, which are like really stupid ones. Um, I didn't say the word Pizza Hut at all. I just said I work at a place called Corporate Pizza, but I mean, somehow the higher ups found it and they sent it all the way up to the top of the chain. He said, we can't fire this kid, he's just stupid. What we're gonna do is we'll just <laughs> scare him to death. And they were like, we're gonna delete your channel or you're fired. So I was like, oh God, so I just deleted the videos. But they were like basically telling me I couldn't ever mention any type of thing related to the restaurant and I was like, but the thing is, I didn't mention your brand at all. And they were like, well, people know you work at Pizza Hut. And I was like, okay. So I've never once in like six years ever tweeted the words Pizza Hut. <laughs> There's still time. And I've been saving those videos to re-upload to be like, what now? <laughs> <laughs> I have a real job. I don't think I've got anything to add to that one because uh, I work in a library. So I, I started that before I went to uni and then I carried on with that. So it's, I haven't really had the opportunity to use my channel as a... I, I, I use it when I'm looking to to do stuff. I do say, here's my channel, I, I do this work. It just shows commitment and mm. um, uh, But has, has, has it, for example, sorry to interrupt there, but has it affected you, like, have you ever been, um, have your colleagues ever, like, asked about it in, in incorporating it, or have you been recognized cool idea for a video. during, in your library, if you you're stacking what? books, or? The, the, I do have to do all the work for the kids now. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, oh, you must entertain kids on your channel. And actually, no, it's, it's 18 to 24, but yeah, okay, no. if they want to come into book time, I'll read to them. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so that's the only, only impact it's really had in my Okay. In my uh, job work. Okay, so um, last question, then we'll, we'll go to um, audience comments. Um, so I really want to be interested to hear, what's your opinion on using your full name on the internet and, and with your YouTube? Because 
Um, obviously, Google exists, and to any future employers or employers you have, they could sit down, and if they don't know about your channel, they could sit down and be like, hmm, I'm going to Google X, Y, Z, and then this could come across. How do you feel, I mean, I guess it, d it also depends on your, on your industry you're in, um, but how do you feel using your full name and having it attached to your name and using, having this as a part of your online brand? Um, in the beginning, I never used my full name. I just used my first name, which was already pretty rare because it's Dutch, so people could recognize it pretty easily. And then I won YouTube Next Up, and my full name was in all the newspaper articles, including the town where I lived, and I was like, okay, here we go. So I changed it on Twitter, and since then, I've also just realized that I can use my channel as an asset, so it's not a bad thing that employers can find me. So at some point, there was a switch where I realized I could use it in a professional way. And obviously, I make sure to not put anything on the channel that I wouldn't want anyone important to see. And so I just take care to do that and the rest is pretty much fine. Mm. I like my name. So <laughs> I, I used to have my name backwards as my username and I just uh, realized that no one could spell it, pronounce it, or really enjoy it. <laughs> so I just rebranded to my full name because I figured I'm like Sana, I'm like one Evan Edinger's. Sorry. It's two Evan Edingers. There's one in uh, Newfoundland, but nobody cares about him. Um, he's actually a really famous like doctor of geography, and I like ever since eighth grade I've been googling my name. Going, hey, what the frick? I'm not too sure what's happening. Yeah. And actually, very relevant. I was also saying on Google, that isn't me. What the frick? Um, so I liked. My goal was to be the coolest Evan Edinger on Google. So I just mm. branded myself, and then. Mm. It's, it's worked out for me, I think. Mm. So. And Sammy, what do you think? I think what's so scary is that Google is so bloody good at its job. I, <laughs> I searched my name up until last month, and I could still find my MySpace stuff. You won't find it now, but I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What if we type in MySpace? I, it's gone. It is burnt oh. <laughs> into the ground. But um, I, I just, uh, you have to be careful what you put online uh, and what you associate with yourself, mm -hmm. because going forward, um, people will search your name, and they want to know what you've been associated with in the past and what you've put your name behind. Mm -hmm. So it, you have to be really really careful, careful about what you do, um, and okay. especially if I, like working with kids uh, in my job, I have to be very careful what I put online. Mm. Some of the stuff I put on my channel probably won't sit too well with that, but... Mm. So do, you, uh, do all of you use your full name then on your, your online identities no, and branding? I don't use it as, as my YouTube channel, I yes. haven't made that switch and I probably never will because mm. my name is impossible to spell so no one will be able to find it. <laughs> yeah. But I have it, so my Twitter handle is my YouTube name but mm. the full name in it is my full name. Okay, because yeah. I think I'm the only one that's a different opinion because I only use my first name and I've always done that. I've, I've grew up in the ages where it's like never give out your second name ever. <laughs> so um, I've always kind of stuck to that mentality and I think it's worked out personally for me okay because I like to keep my online stuff separate from my career and that's okay and I mean like I, I don't know how I've done it but I successfully branded it out or like branched it out but um, so in case you've got any ideas of like oh do I have to give out my full name so you don't have to and it's it you can still separate out quite successfully but um, yeah so those are all the questions um, I'd be really I think it would all be really interested to see if anyone has any questions from the audience does anyone know? Okay. Um, does anyone grab this microphone? There you go. Uh, the guy, yeah, the guy, guy with the, I'm um, spotted. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's your name? Um, Alex. Alex, hi, um, Alex. At what point would you consider giving up your job if YouTube got big enough? And would you? That's a good question. <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> we should start with books and quills. <laughs> I don't think I would because I feel like my YouTube, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for such a long time that I'm learning, I'm, at the moment I'm learning so much more from my full-time job that there's absolutely no reason for me to give up and I love doing it and I can manage it side by side. So that's something that I really enjoy. In order for me to like make as much on YouTube as I do at a real job, I would have to be pretty internet famous. <laughs> like over 2 million, I guess. So in terms of subscribers, not money, money. Um, so I don't really think that I would ever do that unless it was, like I always consider like, what if a company was like, hey, we want to pay you to travel the world. I'm like, cool. <laughs> um, and we'll pay you. Um, but besides that, like I, what I learned at my job is like really added on to my career. It's not like I'm working at a library. I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. My turn in a second. Wow. What is it you do, Evan? 
basically, I have oh, a sorry, you work from home. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I, have a, I have an opportunity to, like, because when I worked at Pizza Hut, I mean, I could be a server and then move up to be a cook. So it was like I couldn't do anything after that, whereas, like, at least I know where I am. Um, if I stay there for a year or two, I can then move up to be, uh, uh, the, like, getting one more money, two more opportunities to do sales and or marketing, uh, have people under me kind of actually be, a, I don't know. That is me. It's this thing right oh. here. Don't touch it. Sorry. <laughs> Drop the bass. Uh, <laughs> I think you just lost they subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's fine. So it's my turn now. Cool. Um, no, I generally find, I think. Everyone that does YouTube doesn't do it necessarily because they want to do it as a career. Um, some see it as a really fun pastime and have been fortunate enough to take it further. Um, some people see it as opening doors to carry on to acting or things like that. Um, and then some people do see it as a platform that they can e expand upon. Um, I find working in a library uh, genuinely enriching. I, I, love, I love working with customers. I become an introvert when I go home, so it's really difficult to film videos and laugh when I've been forced to smile all day. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I'm not looking to give up my job just yet. I, I love it, so, yeah. I think a really good point to uh, mention um, is what you actually want to do in life. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to create videos f for life, you can do that. There's ways to do that. Um, so, but then if you have a, you know, a career, just say you want to become, I don't know, an accountant, for example, um, and you know that this is what you've, you've studied for, this is what you're doing, um, you know, I still think that's okay and you can still juggle with that. Um, but it's really what you need to know. Um, really deep down of what you want to do so um, if you're happy enough with YouTube being a little side project or a little thing to keep you going to keep you excited or whatever that's fine but it's really kind of up to your own personal opinion in your own situation yeah, but, I think uh, like Thatcher Joe I mean mm -hmm. bro, yeah, exactly. was, bro was he's, rocking it yeah, on YouTube he's a great example and great he's example. still thatched roofs yeah. every day yeah. waking up at 6 in the morning that's and a perfect like, example yeah. that's his like dedication to what he'd grown up doing mm -hmm. and yet also YouTube until he was incredibly confident enough to go you know, I really want to focus on YouTube and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, he's, he's a good inspiration for that. Mm -hmm. so. um, I think we've only got time for one more question. So, uh, the girl in the red there? Hi. Um, huh? I work with kids and young oh, sorry. people. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you had <laughs> so the microphone. I'm, I'm sorry. Voice, sorry. Uh, what's your uh, name? Sorry. I'm Maya. Hi. Hiya. Um, I work with kids and young people and I really would love to start a YouTube channel but one thing I'm really worried about is them sort of seeing the videos because then it, then it kind of like blurs that professional boundary because they have like access to my personal life as well so I was wondering like what advice you guys would give with that. Mm -hmm. Um, again. Yeah, I, th I think I, I decided to jump in there. I think this because uh, uh, I've, I've got a, a really similar situation with you because I work in, in with with kids in some sort, of, and so does um, Sammy as well. Um, I tend to just separate it out. Um, what, like we said in the previous question, um, I kind of just keep it separate. I mean, if I mean, as long as you're not doing anything too crazy to kind of harm, and I'm sure you're you're sensible enough to understand that. But I mean, if you're comfortable enough to let that. Oh, cross paths and if, if you maybe check with your um, you know higher up staff and see if how they think about it as well um, but I think if you're maybe keeping it quite separated out but you can also kind of intertwine it and stuff but um, what are you, your guys thoughts? I was a teacher when I started doing YouTube, oh, I was a part-time well, teacher fine. and at that point that was when I wasn't using my full name. I think now if I were to become a teacher again I don't think I would mind because there's nothing on my channel that I wouldn't want them to see because I've made sure there isn't any, because I, I talk about books, you know, it can get too crazy. Um, so <laughs> those are things that I wouldn't be too afraid of them finding it, but it's definitely something to check up with the people that you work for to make sure that they're okay with it because that could be a problem if they discover it a year on. Yeah, I guess it's all about the content you make as well because if you make content that isn't, like we've said, crazy, but the, the word crazy is kind of loaded. I, I guess a good way to say it would be Brand offensive. offensive. No, I mean, that's a good word. Anything offensive. could be offensive to anyone. Yeah. Oh, you caught me in PewDiePie. You played a video game. Um, but I would say, like, try and be brand friendly, which is a good way of just saying, don't swear profusely or be racist or do anything that would a not nice person would be. So just don't be stupid, really. Don't be stupid. <laughs> stupid. And the one thing I'd just say is, um, online, I have like a 
I am a brand. We are all brands, um, and we Deep. represent ourselves differently. As what did you say? Deep. <laughs> yeah. um, and we represent ourselves differently. Um, I have young viewers come into me at work. I work in a library. I'm publicly like, they can come and see me, um, but I'm obviously far different in person as I construct myself to be online. I'm still genuine, but I share select amounts of information, um, and it's purposely geared towards being entertaining. And it's not just me sitting there as I normally would in my room, um, being completely dull uh, and and so it's, it's uh, just the difference between being a brand and being you yourself. Do you teach or something like that? <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's difficult, isn't it, if you've, if you've mm. got a class of kids in front of you. So, it, yeah, it's just brand and you. Yeah. And especially if they try and make, like, your video references in class, you know, it'd be a little awkward. Cinnamon challenge. <laughs> um, hey, Mrs. Do Jones. we have enough time for one more question? No, I'm afraid not. Sorry, guys. Um, but thank you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.